Hello and welcome, farmers, to another episode of What Happened, the show that toils the earth for the most interesting and fruitful developmental stories from your grandpa's farm. Uh, I, I mean, the video game industry has to offer. Today, we're doing something ever so slightly different, as in, we're not focusing exclusively on a specific game that had a rough life cycle or disastrous launch, but rather taking a look back at the confusing history of one of the most beloved and wholesome video game franchises of all time, Harvest M Bokujo Monotogu. Story of Seasons. Well, it's all three of them, really, kinda, but sorta not. But yes, actually, I I'm getting ahead of myself, which usually means it's time for y'all to grab your shovels and put on a fresh pair of overalls, because it's time to find out what happened to Harvest Moon. If you were a fan of the mighty Super Nintendo, there's a chance you might have seen this box art at your local rental store. Your interest was piqued. It was so different from what you'd normally see on the shelf, except for maybe that one. <laughs> then a few years later, you may have spied Harvest Moon 64, then Back to Nature, Friends of Mineral Town, and a whole farmer's dozen of others. While certainly a more low-key franchise, the farming simulator struck a chord with the people who weren't just about running and or gun. Harvest Moon then quickly became a beloved staple series with a pretty consistent level of quality across both consoles and handhelds. It was also a huge boon to the series' main publisher, Natsume, who consistently published the games in North America and occasionally Europe. Nintendo would actually publish a fair few of them in Europe and Australia too, for whatever reason. What a lot of Western fans may not have known, especially in the early days, was that Natsume had very little to do with the series outside of localization. That's because Harvest Moon, aka Bokujo Monogatari, literally Farm Story, was made by a separate studio entirely. The first entry on the Super Nintendo was developed by a small design team named Amcus under their Japanese publisher, Pack in Video. Video, with series creator Yasuhiro Wada acting as a planner. It was published in Japan by Pack and Video and would later be published in North America by Natsume. Shortly after the game's August 1996 release in Japan, Pack and Video merged with Victor Electronics and became a part of their flagship game studio, Victor Interactive Software. Fortunately, for the sake of this video's runtime, it stays like that for the next six and a half years. I, I hope you're still with me because we've only just started. Natsume would be kept on board as the go-to studio for localizing the series for the West. Now, Natsume also had a complicated timeline of its own, so we're gonna give it its own little section here, cause they're a whole other beast. There are two arms to this publisher, Natsume Co. Limited, the original Japanese branch, and Natsume Inc., the American arm. Natsume Co. Limited was responsible for developing 16-bit classics like Wild Guns, Pocky and Rocky, The Ninja Warriors, and of course, Mighty Morphin Power. Power Rangers The Fighting Edition. Oh my god. Bro, he just died. Dude, I'm trying to play in I'm trying to play this game about Bri Evo. The American Natsume Inc.'s work was mostly localizing and publishing. Additionally, the Japanese Natsume Co. Limited would later merge with a Japanese pachinko company named Atari, but but not that Atari, and form Natsume Atari. As if this couldn't get any worse, the American Natsume Inc. would also later open a studio in Japan called Natsume Inc. Japan. P please make sure you're taking notes here, everybody. This will be on the quiz. Anyway, at some point in Natsume's publishing deal for the series, there is one unique benefit they were able to take advantage of. Natsume would own the localized name Harvest Moon, and it would remain their intellectual property until this very day. Victor Interactive was free to publish the games in Japan as they saw fit and continued to use the original Bokujo Monogatari name. The franchise continued on like this throughout the early 2000s, but between the PS2 title, Save the Homeland, and one of the franchise's bigger hits, Friends of Mineral Town, changes were happening behind the scenes. On March 24th, 2003, Marvelous Entertainment bought a 55% stake in Victor Interactive, which made them the majority shareholder. Thus, Victor Interactive became Marvelous Interactive. Suddenly, the company that both developed and published Bokujo was now a much bigger entity than Natsume, but the deal that had been struck for the Harvest Moon series would remain. And if that all makes too much sense to you, don't worry, things get even more complicated in 2007 with Marvelous's purchase of Exceed. Exceed was founded in 2004 as a localization studio for Japanese games. They would publish a few titles before being fully purchased by Marvelous in 2008. 
2007. They would later go on to publish What Happened All-Stars, like Samurai Showdown Sen, The Legend of Heroes series, and of course, Juon, The Haunted House Simulator. Through all of this, Natsume still localized many a farming sim for Marvelous, from the futuristic Innocent Life to most of the fantastical Rune Factory series, they were still an important ally for Marvelous to get their games shipped worldwide in a timely manner. Exceed, ultimately, was a small company and probably didn't have the bandwidth to do as many releases as Marvelous was able to churn out. In 2007 and 2009, though, Natsume would ship two Harvest Moon puzzle games, Puzzle to Harvest Moon and Harvest Moon Frantic Farming, which were developed and shipped under the Harvest Moon name with no involvement from Marvelous. A test, perhaps, for farming things out to come? Ultimately, those farming things would indeed come in 2014, where the big schism would occur. Over the course of 16 years, Natsume had shipped 26 Harvest Moon games in the West, undeniably cementing it as their main cash cow. By this time, though, it seems Marvelous had had enough. They no longer needed a middleman taking a cut of their profits when they already owned another company that did the same thing. They made preparations to bring Exceed further under their umbrella and thus consolidated them internally to become Marvelous USA in 2013. Although they would still operate with the Exceed branding. With these changes enacted, the next Bokujo Monogatari game would naturally be done under Exceed, and so it was announced as what many fans took to be a new series, Story of Seasons. Now, what is Story of Seasons? Well, it's the same as the old Harvest Moon games. Natsume only owned specifically the English name Harvest Moon. The Japanese name for Story of Seasons is in fact Bokujo Monogatari, Tsunagaru Shintenshi, or Farm Story to the New World. As you can see, the branding in Japan is no different from the rest of the series, blessing the citizens of Japan with a farming series that doesn't need some confusing YouTube video to explain it. Going through a name change outside of Japan, though, was a bit of a risk for Marvelous, because they could no longer bank on the well-known Harvest Moon name in the West, so they had to trust that their overseas fans would be savvy enough to know what's what. To try and dispel all this confusion, Nintendo World Report held an interview in 2014 with a longtime producer at Marvelous, Yoshifumi Hashimoto, to try to explain it as best he could, because not everyone understood exactly what was going on and why. The thing is, in Japan it's called Bokujo Monogatari, which is Farm Story. In America it was Harvest Moon, but Natsume owns that IP, so even though we're changing the publisher, it's the same series in Japan. For 18 years, it's been the same development team, so the game itself hasn't really changed in that sense, but Natsume is doing their own Harvest Moon now because we sort of have a different way of looking at where Harvest Moon should go. That's where we departed each other. So in that, Exceed being part of, we're in the same company. We're 100% a subsidiary of Marvelous AQL, so it's just easier to communicate on a daily basis from now on. So yeah, if Natsume wanted to continue to publish Harvest Moon games, they would need to make their own. Natsume's non-farming ventures hadn't fared as well in terms of sales. Games like The Real Fishing Series, Africa, and the indelible, totally not unmemorable, Rough Trigger weren't exactly lighting NPD charts ablaze. Harvest Moon, on the other hand, had sold millions of copies under Natsume, so it's safe to say that over the last 20 years, farming games had been keeping the lights on. Even though they were losing the original series, they were totally within their rights to push forward with new and much worse Harvest Moon titles. You have to assume Natsume knew well in advance that they were losing access to the Bokujo Monokatari series given that they had already had a new quote-unquote Harvest Moon game ready to go in 2014, the same year that the Japanese Story of Seasons released in its home country. Natsume had turned to Tabat Inc, who, uh, wow, yeah, uh, give me a second here, um, uh, yeah, Tabat Inc, who made a game called Wacky World of Sports and worked on a title called 
with lollipop chainsaw? Uh, okay, ad additional modeling. <laughs> That's what I thought. Anyway, Natsume would turn to them to craft the new Harvest Moon, which would come in the form of Harvest Moon 3D The Lost Valley. As you can see, that game failed spectacularly at living up to the series' legacy. While the post-Natsume takeover experienced ups and downs, The Lost Valley reviewed overall as the worst game of the series over on Metacritic. Thus, when you consider how this was the first game after the brand split, many Harvest Moon fans were pretty shell-shocked when they booted this one up. While it did bring a number of new ideas, like a more magical-based narrative to the farm, most critics critiqued the fact that it was simply too boring and took too long to open up, as well as lacking a lot of the charm of the previous entries. This was then followed up with Sky Tree Village, a sequel that barely anyone seems to talk about. It fared slightly better with critics and fans, but most found it to be only an incremental improvement over the Lost Valley, as it didn't do anything vastly new. Unfortunately, Actually, the move to the Switch, PS4, and phones didn't improve matters much. Harvest Moon, Light of Hope, despite its subtitle, didn't give longtime fans much hope for the future. This 2017 entry saw a big change in art style, which wasn't to many fans' tastes. I, I mean, it was really fucking bad, as well as simplified mechanics, limited crafting, and a very short story. Light of Hope was barely covered by most video game websites, going largely unreviewed. Things have debated Debatably improved somewhat with last year's Harvest Moon One World, as Natsume was at least able to get it some more press coverage. This didn't result in much better reviews from critics or fans, mind you. While some of them had positive things to say about it than the previous game, the Metacritic average actually slipped even lower than Light of Hope's already lukewarm score. If I can hazard a guess here, without decades of experience developing farm sims, it's just been really hard for Natsume made to crack the code here. They've pushed out four Harvest Moon farm sims in only seven years, which is just asking fans to get burned out. Add in the fact that more and more fans are becoming savvy of the Harvest Moon slash Story of Seasons situation and a certain indie developer's other gargantuan farming hit, well, Natsume seems to have a forever uphill battle on their hands. Now, as for Story of Seasons, well, having fewer new releases overall has still fared much better. The new games have mostly stuck to what made them so successful in the first place. Fans and critics have continued to enjoy the classic vibes and familiar mechanics that have been on offer. You definitely start to see a pattern emerge here though. Fans of Harvest Moon mostly migrated over to Story of Seasons and seem to generally have more goodwill with each new entry. Whereas Harvest Moon is the exact opposite. All the sequels under Natsume have had more and more muted responses with each new release. According to Steam Spy, Harvest Moon Light of Hope performed best, selling around 25,000 units on Steam, with One World barely even cracking 2,000. Meanwhile, the best performing story of Seasons title, Friends of Mineral Town, sits above 70,000 units sold. And the worst performer, Pioneers of Olive Town, is around 23,000 units at the time of this writing. This, of course, is just a small sample of the series' sales, as even a cursory look at Japanese retail sales for the series show that Steam accounts for only a fraction of sales for the Story of Seasons games. Unfortunately, these new Harvest Moon games under Natsume actually don't even release in Japan, so it's not really possible to directly compare the two to further dunk on new Harvest Moon. Now, we do need to loop back around to Yasuhiro Wada, the longtime shepherd of the Bokujo Monogatari series. He had felt a little listless in hands-off managerial positions and wanted to return to game development, so he stepped down from his position at Marvelous in 2010, spent a year and change at Grasshopper Manufacture, then founded Toy Box Inc. in 2012 with Tomio Kanazawa. Their debut game would be an all-new farming sim titled Hometown Story, completely disconnected from Bokujo Monogatari and New Harvest Moon. In America, it would be published by Natsum. <laughs> oh, come the fuck on! What are the chances? Anyway, they would actually move 
past farming sims and onto the greener pastures of original games like Birthdays, The Beginning, and Little Dragon Cafe, and more recently have made larger and more ambitious games like Deadly Premonition 2 and the Nintendo published DC Superhero Girls Teen Power, which was produced by Wada himself and directed by one Masayuki Ide, who long ago worked on Wacky World of Sports at Tabit Inc. Ooh, there's one more cool angle to all of this though. While the mergers, splits, and murky publishing rights happened in the background, the Harvest Moon franchise imprinted its wholesome outlook onto a lot of fans, with one such fan being Eric Barone, who single-handedly developed his dream farming sim over the course of five years. This game, of course, was Stardew Valley, the game that you, your little sister, and your grandmother have all heard of. It has since crossed 20 million sales across all platforms, quite possibly putting it ahead of the entire Bokujo series. And in an attempt to end on a good note, Wada and Barone even met a few years ago while Birthdays, the beginning, was about to launch, with both creators being very complimentary of each other's work. A surreal moment for them both, I'm sure. Even though corporate restructuring, confusing branding, and these new lackluster sequels have kind of muddied the Harvest Moon waters, it's at least easy to see that the spirit still lives on in other their games, no matter the name on the box. A huge thanks goes out to Big Boss Brook down at my Patreon for nominating this week's episode. If you know of any other fateful foibles in the video game or movie industries, suggest them in the comments below or drop me a line on my Twitter. See you next time and thanks for watching! Beep.